You may have realized that being healthy feels different than it did in the past now that you're over 50. If you want to maximize your health potential but don't have time to read through overwhelming pages of Google links, this is the show for you. Welcome to Healthy Tips After 50. We love doing the research, finding solutions, talking to health experts, and learning what works and what doesn't. Now, your host. She spent the last 25 years dedicated to feeling her best and is here to share her best findings with you, Susan Rosen. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan Rosen. And today I have another, as I always do, interesting guest who is here to talk to us about health and wellness. What else is there to talk about? And his name is Neil Cannon. And um, I am also going to let Neil kind of give us his own intro and then we will go on from there so welcome neil really excited thank you thank you susan thank you for having me on your podcast i'm excited for this conversation for the short conversation we had beforehand and um my my stance on the health and wellness thing is getting to the cause of illness so you can ignite your own inner healing healer so you can eradicate symptoms come off drugs and just live a life rich in vitality so i will uh, talk about how i got to this and my story because it's most easy for people to relate when when they hear the story and i'll try and keep it super short so i'm I'm sure you know everyone who works in holistic health i would say everyone i know without exception who works in holistic health comes with their own story of healing some kind of recovery or they've helped someone else close to them with some kind of healing and recovery and i myself and come with a story so i have very bad eczema from a toddler it went on to my early 30s and it wasn't until my father suffered a stroke when I started looking into my own condition. So for 30 years, I was always given the same treatments, symptom masking treatments, very short-term solutions, which meant it would always come back. And all of those treatments cause harm. So I was given steroid creams, which have left pigmentation on my skin. I don't know if you can see that, but overuse of steroid creams causes that. They appear to work for the short term because they heal the skin really quickly, but then it causes more harm in the long term. Same with prescription moisturizers full of nasty, toxic ingredients which should not be put on your skin, which is a semi-permeable membrane and absorbs everything into the bloodstream, most things into the bloodstream. And then we have um, antibiotics. When it got really bad, when I had a flare-up, I'd be prescribed antibiotics, which I'm sure you know harm the gut microbiome. And I know they're very effective in certain situations. They can get us out of trouble. For things like skin conditions, It tend they tend to just do over prescriptions or do too many prescriptions and they weaken the gut, the very organ you want to heal if you have a skin condition or any other kind of chronic inflammatory health condition for that matter. So that was a treatment I had for 30 years. And it wasn't until my father suffered a stroke when I started looking into my own thing because I had this kind of inner knowing his stroke was avoidable. Prior to his stroke, he was told by his sister, who's a naturopathic doctor who had tested his blood, that he had chronic inflammation. I remember him telling me this. We were in a family home in the kitchen. He was making tea. And he said, Neil, I've got chronic inflammation, whatever that means. And I was just getting into health and wellness at that point. So a few years later, when he had the stroke, I remembered this. And I had also written a book on increasing testosterone naturally, which is linked with reducing inflammation. I, at that point, I was seeing this word inflammation everywhere. And I started to hear about it being spoken about as the underlying cause of illness. I had this kind of inner knowing that he could have avoided this. Mm. It was a combination, I would say, of, of what I'd learned and researched, and also this inner knowing, this innate intelligence, something from within telling me he did not have to have this stroke. And I went on more of a research quest to figure out what this thing called chronic inflammation was all about. And sure enough, very soon I found just by reading a few books, watching some documentaries, watching some interviews with experts, with doctors that I really respect, that inflammation was the underlying cause of the hypertension that ultimately led to a stroke, also a result of chronic inflammation. And also the asthma he'd had since 12 years old, also a result of chronic inflammation, a fully reversible condition. Not many people know that, but it is. And of course, the eczema I'd had from a very young age, from being a toddler. Mm -hmm. So I decided to just change some of my habits, my diet, my lifestyle, and very quickly, my eczema went. I actually moved to LA as well and uh, kind of set up a new life. And I just became eczema free. And of course, the environment helped a lot with the sun and the ocean. And I cleaned up my diet a lot. I didn't realize that a lot of what I was eating was inflammatory. So I changed my diet, my lifestyle and habits, and it went away. I can't say it's cured, quote unquote, cured, because that suggests it will never come back. 
But if my body becomes toxic in any kind of way, i.e. inflamed, then it can come back. For the most part, it's gone. And since 2015, I've been helping people reverse all kinds of chronic inflammatory health conditions by applying the same principles really across the board. Pretty extraordinary results. So that's, I'll try to do this in a minute. That was longer than a minute. I hope that's okay. Yeah. Oh no, that's, that's fine. That's fine. I don't, I don't mind at all. I think it's, it's always really interesting to hear how people ended up in health and wellness. Yeah. Everybody, like yeah. you said, everybody's got their story. It's, you know? Yeah, you, you don't tend to go into health and wellness for the money. <laughs> it's um, unless you're, you know, someone who's developed an amazing supplement and you make billions from it. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Anyway, don't just go down that route. The point is, there's most people have some kind of inflection point in their lives. I used to be in real estate, and then I set up my own business doing interior fitouts and houses and stuff. And I just started to become more and more interested in this. And it was never a plan. I've got a business degree. I've got a master's in real estate investment. Not nothing to do with this. I do have a qualification in nutrition as well, but it's I had no plan to do this whatsoever. Yeah. No. No. I. I. I understand that. I totally understand that. I spent, I don't know, 25 years in supply chain. So got an FBA, you know, I mean, (laughs) but I, but I was always the one reading and stuff. And everybody in my family used to always ask me questions about what should I do about this? What should I do about that? And when I kind of semi-retired, I thought, oh, okay, well, let's start a podcast. (laughs) Yeah. To share content and value with the world. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I and I think that there's even though that there's a lot more information out there now, um, I think it's still hard for people to find, you know, something that isn't going to their MD and walking away yeah. with a prescription. Yeah. Well, I set this up my podcast as well. Yeah. And and wrote the books that I've written. Yeah. So um anyways, no, that's um yeah, I my my whole story started with allergies and all that kind of stuff a long time ago. The allergist I went to said, Oh, okay, well, Nothing is going to help you except stop eating all those things. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> and I now you're rid of them? Um, No, I wouldn't say I'm rid of them. I just don't eat. They're, it's gone down. There are a couple of things. You know, it's did come and go as you get older. Have you, have you had allergies your whole life? Um, Pretty much so. My mother and all three of my brothers all have allergies. So we all got it from my mom. I'm asking because often, as we'll, I'm sure we'll discuss soon, most illness, most symptoms are rooted in some kind of trauma, and that could date back to the womb. I've just been to a Joe Dispenza event, one of his advanced retreats in Cancun. Mm-hmm. Familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. It's all teaching principles of the quantum energy and really principles that have been around since the beginning of time, but have been suppressed, sadly. Yeah. Uh, but people are attending his, his retreats and reversing the most incurable of illnesses in a matter of days. Spontaneous remissions from the most advanced cancers, autoimmune diseases, handicapped people are walking again, deaf people are hearing again, blind yeah. people are seeing again. All this stuff that is available to us, we just don't know about it because of our uh, outdated paradigms. Let's just say that. Yeah. Uh, antiquated paradigms. So I'm... Um, I bring this in because when I when I attended on the first day, I met someone who'd reversed her allergy in one advanced retreat. She'd wow. had them for 10 years. Uh-huh. And in the last, I think she said she felt the moment they were gone in one of her meditations. And I said, she said she'd had them for 10 years. So I said, 10 years ago, it, or in that year, was that a big year? Was it a traumatic year at all? And she paused and she said, yeah, that was a massive year in my life, like tons of trauma. And she kind of, she was almost in disbelief. She said, no one's ever asked me that question. And I said, well, most illness is rooted in trauma. Most symptoms are rooted in trauma. Mm-hmm. And I said, the way I see this is you have transmuted that energy and your body's recalibrated. And this is what happens really across the board. It's like you remove the blockages, you remove the energetic blockages and you allow this life force, this infinite intelligence to come through and heal the body. But that that's quite advanced stuff. Um, I just wanted to share that because you shared about your allergies and I thought, why not go there? No, that's 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 incredible. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'll have to talk to you about that. After yeah, I, I encourage you to go to one of those events. They're amazing. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. No, I've 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 heard of him for actually for a long time for different people and i believe i've watched some of his stuff on um some of his i don't know what do you whatever you call them interviews yeah yeah the yeah. content yeah where he's from they've because they've his um his retreats yeah. retreat seminars yeah so um no i've had i've had allergies i think i started when i was little i don't remember exactly but they change interesting that is interesting because like i said my mother had them and, and then all four kids ended up with them my father didn't have anything at all. Well, you know about epigenetics, don't you? I do, yes, actually. 
Yeah. So it doesn't matter if we come from a family of allergies, cancer, diabetes, it doesn't matter at all because we can we have the power to change the environment in the body to influence our gene expression. Tell, telling us has done for 20 years. So all of this stuff, I believe the body can heal anything. I used to think it was limited to various chronic illnesses, but now I believe the body can heal everything within reason. I don't know if you can regrow a limb, but I know about organs rebuilding, thyroids rebuilding, regrowing, livers completely rebalancing, multiple brain tumors disappearing in days. It's amazing. Yeah, I have to um have to look into some of that a little more than you know hopping around and reading and finding out about things but never diving in. yeah interesting i'll get get some of that information from you after <laughs> after we sure. talk yeah so let's um go a little bit more into into this because i know one of the things you've got four pillars of vitality is that still or have you yes yeah that? so the, this is it this is this is how i work now with my with my clients in uh-huh. either privately or in group settings we have um we go through what i call the four pillars of vitality so physical mental emotional energetic the vitality secret my last book is really about chronic inflammation and healing it from the from the best part with nutrition and exercise and also reducing stress grounding sunlight some of the more basic things the latest book which is coming out or, or the next book which is coming out in the next month or two um, it will be called the vitality code this is this is talking about the four pillars of vitality to reverse illness and discover the energy you never knew you had. Uh, the subtitle is actually to be decided um literally in the next day or two before we go to print um so yeah four pillars physical mental emotional energetic so the physical is as the name suggests mm-hmm. it's Everything, um, well, diet, exercise, elimination of toxins internally and externally. Whatever we can do to reduce inflammation or eliminate it from the body is going to help us. So really understanding what chronic inflammation is, understanding that it's the immune system protecting us from foreign or alien intruders and also chronic stress. Whatever we can do to take these intruders out, take the toxins out and replenish the body with fuel is ultimately what we're doing with the physical. We're taking the toxins out putting fuel in. And most people who have chronic symptoms have a level of chronic inflammation in the body. So we need to test for it. And if we're if we're elevated, if the levels are elevated, we just need to do whatever we can to bring those levels down. The thing is, most people aren't testing themselves for it. But the standard test that people do, don't test for the very condition that creates illness, <laughs> believe it or not. So we do these various inflammatory marker tests, figure out if ele- levels are elevated and go about healing the body from the inside out. So nutrition, exercise, eradication of internal toxins, external toxins, and then we move on to the next pillar, depending on where they are on the vitality journey. Any questions on the physical? Okay, let's go to the mental bit. So the mental pillar is really fascinating. The, the mental is really about how our thoughts and beliefs dictate our biology and we most people are familiar with the placebo we know that if we take an inner substance a pill which is a sugar pill and we take it every day maybe several times a day for weeks months whatever it is through the sheer power of belief we command our body to secrete the perfect concoction of chemicals our own pharmacy of chemicals to heal the body and as if by magic, symptoms disappear. The, sign, the, the placebo effect is scientifically proven. We know that between a third of results and all, almost 50% of results in randomized placebo trials, it's the placebo effect which is responsible for the results. It is scientifically proven that we can heal the body through thought alone. A belief is a thought that we continue to think. We heal the body through thought. We heal the body through belief. So that is massive and deserves much more attention than it's been given. The nocebo effect is that in the flip side of the placebo effect. So instead of thinking yourself vital, thinking yourself healed, we can think ourselves sick. And if we become identified with the name of an illness or dis-ease, and we keep on repeating that same story to ourselves, we can end up creating illness, like psychosomatically creating illness uh-huh. through our thoughts. Oh, yeah. And it's massive. So when I work with people, I say, hey, um, can you, well, I invite them (laughs) to remove the label from their language they use. If they say, for example, a friend of mine recently has been diagnosed with stage two cancer. I don't, by the way, I don't work with people with cancer. I I do support them, but I don't take them on as clients or haven't yet anyway. It's but a loaded subject. That's not to say I can't help and I've researched it a lot. Um, I was talking to him and I just suggested that uh, he remove the the label label he's giving it because he said, my cancer, this is among a lot of other things he spoke about. Yeah. But right at the end, he said, my cancer. And I said, this is when I said, I invite you to just remove that. 
don't have an association with it because if you talk about your cancer you end up giving more energy to it mm -hmm. we know from an energetic standpoint we are energy beings and we know that wherever you, wherever you place your attention is where you place your energy so wherever you give your attention more the energy is going to expand around that very thing so talking about your condition again and again and again ends up giving more energy to the very thing you don't want to give energy to so the, the mental piece is huge um there's also the psychology of committing to your own vitality journey and to becoming free from illness free from pain free from medication what it's going to mean for the individual for a full recovery some people don't actually want to heal not not on a conscious level on a subconscious level they don't actually want it there's various um, reasons why they want to stay sick completely subconscious because it satisfies various needs that they have at that stage mm -hmm. so we want to get past those uh, false benefits of maybe it's you know a cry for help whatever it is to be yeah. seen to be heard some people like to stay sick not consciously subconscious so helping mm -hmm. them gear up and get clear on a vision and get clear on their why so they can be inspired by their vision, go beyond motivation, go to inspiration, get pulled forward by a vision rather than having to kick themselves into action to make yeah. themselves better. That's the mental piece. No, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> the next one is, so most people can get, get their head around the idea that, or not the idea, the fact that around 90% of illness, chronic illness, is down to chronic stress. Mm. Chronic stress creates chronic inflammation. Living by the hormones of stress creates the pharmacy of chemicals for disease, basically. Simplest way of looking at it. You downregulate genes for growth and repair. It's, it's living um, from fear, from a place of survival. And that, that is not conducive to a, an environment of healing. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is change that environment, signal new genes in new ways. This is the words of Dr. Joseph Spencer again, actually, which we can do through a, a variety of tools and techniques. Um, but with, with emotional health, a lot of people don't realize what, cross, what chronic stress actually is. Chronic stress is really, or stress is actually our internal response to external strain. Mm -hmm. So it's our perception of our world around us, which has the potential to create this stress response in the body. And it's really our own interpretation, the meaning that we give to whatever life throws at us or throws for us presents to us mm -hmm. it's the meaning that we give to that event that has the potential to create stress in the body mm -hmm. i always use the traffic jam example you can have two people in exactly the same external circle external circumstance and have very different response mm -hmm. so you can be flowing on the way to work and then suddenly there's an accident grind to a halt one person can just be relaxed pull ahead call their boss say hey i'm going to be late listen to music listen to a podcast this is the vitality secret podcast or your one maybe and just chill out and just, you know that their biology is not going to change. It's just going to be calm and fine. Mm -hmm. Another person can be in exactly the same circumstance and they will start swearing, effing and blinding, weaving in and out of traffic, cutting other drivers up, screaming. <laughs> and you can virtually see the veins popping out of their neck, their head. You can see the, the blood rushing to their head. You can kind of imagine what's going on. You know that their biology is changing in a negative way. I used to... Oh, I feel a bit shameful saying this 15 years ago or something I used to get road rage and um not in a really bad way but I just get angry you know if people were sat yeah. in the outside lane get out you know and my girlfriend at the time would say Neil just chill out you're gonna give yourself high blood pressure I didn't I didn't listen to it but um now I'm understanding how we are in control of our biology by how we respond to our world around us. Mm -hmm. So what are people responding to in a traffic jam? They respond, what's the situation? It's, it's meaningless. The meaning it has is the meaning that we give to it. Mm -hmm. It's just that we give meaning to ultimately what is lots of stationary cars. So it's when we peel back the layers of the onion, we're going, why, why is that creating a fear response in my body? What's that? Why is that triggering something on me, mm -hmm. in me? Am I about to disappoint someone? Am I about to let someone down? How's that going to reflect on me? And then you start going, oh, okay, now I'm starting to see why I'm getting triggered by this situation where there are lots of stationary cars. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the, the point is everything is perspective and we can change our biology by changing our perspective. Yeah. So let me, let me put in there a different way of kind of looking at it as well. Mm -hmm which is that it really just comes down to your thoughts. It's not even just reaction or anything like that. It's your thoughts. And your thoughts, you know, can be happy. Your thoughts can be upset. Your thoughts can be whatever, but it's just a thought. Yeah. And if, if you, you know, see or recognize that, oh, I'm having horrible thoughts about this. I'm just going to stop doing that. 
I'm going to move on. Right. Yeah. Then you can let it go. And it's um, th- yeah, actually there's a there's a whole way of philosophy, I guess you can call it whatever, called the three principles. And that's that's part of that whole thing is, you know, mind consciousness and thought. It, yes. And becoming the conscious observer of your thought. Yeah. Yeah. And just Most say, of us, oh, okay. and let it go. Yeah. Most of us aren't aware that where our thoughts come from and that we can actually influence them. We we can choose. I, 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 mm-hmm. I've had to really coach myself in the recent month, in fact, something pretty big happening in my world, yeah. which if I didn't have these tools, say this happened five years ago, I'd have been in a victim state yeah. and thinking life was, it was throwing things at me, like I was completely out of control and all this stuff was happening to me. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I've gone into the face of human potential growth and personal growth and all yeah. these things in fact let's say five years 10 years ago I, I guess I attended my first Tony Robbins event when I was ah okay understanding emotional intelligence and that's right. all that stuff's super helpful um I had no idea that I was in control of my thoughts and my emotions no one had taught me that at school it was it just became very free so I was able to create new meaning for my past yeah. and uh, yeah. things where I was previously victim to I was able to create new meaning for them and develop retrospective judgment so I can actually look at them and say right that's made me stronger in this way the reason that happened is because of this now it's guided me all on this path I'm starting to get it now I also (laughs) saw people reframe traumas that I cut so severe so horrific so awful I saw women reframe their traumas and Mm -hmm. I thought oh my goodness they they created new meaning for their traumas not not reframing it it's 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 creating a whole new meaning Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for them so they can live free from the shackles of it let it go Mm -hmm. and and I thought if they can do it I can do it yeah I wrote about this in my last book actually and then Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen suicidal people like Tony Robbins for example have an intervention with suicidal people Right. He asked. He asked the, world, the audience, "Who who here is suicidal?" And I can't remember the ratio of people. We're two thousand seven hundred people in the room. Maybe fifty or sixty people put their hands up, and then they're like, "If he's if you he, got nine or ten, stay standing, and twelve people remain standing." And he did this yeah. interventions with both of them, yeah. and he was going through their thoughts, what it meant for them to feel a certain way. He calls it the rules. What do you have to think to feel a certain way? What do you have to think to feel a certain way? It was very empowering, and we saw these two people's thought processes change live on pretty much live on stage Mm -hmm. and to the best of my knowledge they're they're okay Mm -hmm. um and it's just an example of what we can do when we become aware of our thoughts and there are so many tools available to us that just are not in the mainstream we have to go beyond um yeah i don't like to be derogatory towards any kind of profession uh all i want to do is understand i'm an investigator so mm-hmm. if I'm I'm if I'm finding that I can help people reverse illness without a single medical qualification, I want to know why those with medical qualifications can't do something that I'm thinking is quite simple. Right. And but 2015, I discovered the underlying cause, of, or or rather the origins of Western medicine, which goes into psychotherapy and oncology uh-huh. and across them. And I'm thinking, oh, now I'm getting it. Something happened in 1910, which altered the entire course cur- curriculum, taught to doctors to make it about drugs and surgery, which has now become a $4 trillion medical industrial complex, controlling so much of what we know yeah. to be true in the mainstream. So once we know that, we can go, okay, <laughs> I just said a lot there. That was quite a big bombshell, maybe. Once we know that, we can then go, okay, I'm going to put that aside, honor it for what it's amazing at, emergencies, get us out of trouble. My own parents wouldn't be alive, you know, if it wasn't for the Western medical industry and some of my friends in England wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for them. Mm-hmm. When it comes to chronic illness and dis-ease, I realise that it's, let's just say, limited. Mm-hmm. Limited and harmful. Mm-hmm. Because there's not a single drug on the market that doesn't come with side effects. Oh, every yeah. drug, bar none, comes with side effects, which means every drug, bar none, causes harm. William Osler, the, fa- the father of modern medicine, said, if you take medicine, you have to recover twice. Once from the medicine, once, once from the illness. Medicine mm-hmm. meaning medication. I'm not yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, medicine yeah. prior to 1910. Uh-huh. So I've, I've said a lot. Um, once we establish that there's another way of doing, we yep. can go down the healing path. The, I will not call it alternative health. I'll not call it alternative medicine. They're both misnomers. They mean nothing. Right. There is a holistic health path you where go. you actually get to the cause of your illness mm-hmm. yeah. and so you, you listen to the warning lights on your dashboard i.e a symptom and you investigate the cause to find out where that symptom comes from what has 
What's caused that oil light to start flashing on my dashboard? Oh, the oil needs replacing. So you take your car to the mechanic, the, the mechanic fix it at the root cause. So the oil light stops get, stops flashing. Same right. thing with the body. That would That's what medicine used to be prior mm-hmm. to 1910. Your, the eczema warning light starts flashing. They can't, they, but we don't need to go there just yet. Although it is, it is also symptomatic of chronic inflammation. Uh-huh. Asthma, arthritis, gout, whatever it is, whatever that warning light is, it's, it's a call to say, hey, Neil, or whatever your name is, time to investigate what's going on in your body because you're out of alignment. There's toxicity there. Maybe it's your thoughts. Maybe it's your emotions. Maybe yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't forget what's going on inside your head. Oh, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Not just the, you know, the arms and the oh, legs and the torso. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. So, yeah, there's, there's a whole... There's a way of going about health and healing. More people are opening up, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because what normally happens... Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. No, no, I was just agreeing. I was just... Okay, I was, I was going to say what normally happens. I've got my own podcast. I interview people who reverse incurable illnesses, according to Western medicine. I'm doing air quotes here. Oh, by the way, incurable. I, I, I did, sat in an ayahuasca ceremony recently. And the shaman, or well, he didn't call himself a shaman, facilitator. He said, do you know what incurable means? Well, supposedly you can't cure it. He, he said... No, it means you have to go in. Ah. And I thought, ooh, I love that. Yeah. Because we do. We have to go within. Right. Sometimes people can just go on an anti-inflammatory diet and their symptoms go away. But for the most part, it requires the four pillars. It requires the diet, the exercise, the extraction of toxins, the replenishing of fuel, oxygen, water, nutrients, eradicating waste, grounding, sunlight. It requires that. And the magic happens when you go within. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing what happens once you start going within. You start you start finding out much more about the body once you go within. And it's often the case that when you really peel back the layers of the onions of chronic illness and dis-ease, most of the time it's traced back to trauma, mm-hmm. also known as trapped emotion. Mm-hmm. And then that electromagnetic bundle of energy that gets stored in the body when you're thrown out of whack when you're thrown out of alignment on your current path it Mm -hmm. jolts you so hard that it's it's so it's stored in the body Mm -hmm. that then becomes solidified and starts to create symptoms in the body or in your life addictions family relationships intimate relationships finances it's all this energy that gets trapped when you when we go within and we start releasing this energy the body starts to go back into balance back into homeostasis Mm -hmm. and magic it's almost like magic magic happens and we can have sp- spontaneous remission if yeah. we follow or immerse ourselves into meditation and heart and brain coherence and really tuning back into the frequency of love ultimately back into the heart the power of the heart yeah. the frequency of the pharmacy of chemicals that love secretes are very different compared with the frequency of chemicals that fear secretes i'll say that in a different way if we live from a place of love mm-hmm and appreciation and gratitude, we literally have a different pharmacy of chemicals of chemicals secreted in the body. And the chemicals of fear, namely stress and anger, anything that is under the umbrella of fear secretes a very different concoction of chemicals, which typically create dis- dis-ease. So the more that we get back into love, into alignment with our heart, with our heart's calling, with our purpose, and we are on track, then things come back into balance. And I think that's where we find that freedom within. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot easier to respond to whatever life presents for us. Oh no, absolutely. Absolutely. I I I totally agree. And there are there are different, like I was saying, I mean, for for me, the big thing that I found was the three principles. And very similar to what you're talking about, right? With the thoughts and stuff, is that kind of one of the things that that is a basis of that is to understand that none of us are broken and none of us are lacking anything. Because absolutely. that's absolutely that's what people are always running around trying to do, right? They're trying to fill the fill the holes. Fill and the there woods. aren't any holes. So yeah. Yeah. yeah it's in it is massive. Yeah. It really, it really is. I um give you a very quick story of my own, which is oh God, a little over a year ago, I was in a really bad car accident. This big this big um came in and, and hit my car right at my door. They had to cut me out of the car and I was fine. And I was, you know, and afterwards I'm talking and everything. And, and, um, and I can't tell you how many people said to me, how, how are you, how, number one, how are you okay? How did you not get hurt in this? And, you know, and, and how come, how come it doesn't seem to be bothering you? It's like, because I have this understanding. I just know how 
how it is. I mean, they 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 totaled my car. The the frame got bent. I you know the one right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They couldn't they couldn't fix it. You know. So you didn't get injured. No, nope, not at all. So what do you think that was? Knowing that that it was okay, that I would be okay. You know, just wow. you know, it um. And the funny, the, not funny. The the thing was that I didn't even. I mean, it wasn't like I was. It wasn't like I sat there thinking to myself, oh, okay. I'm okay. I need to. No, no. It just the whole thing just happened. It was so it was interesting. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but then again, when I trip walking down the street, that's a whole different issue. <laughs> <laughs> I do that way I'm too okay. often, <laughs> but that's a whole different, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we won't go there. Um, <laughs> anyways, so as we were saying, so was that all four that you talked about, or was there one more? Some reason there, said- there is one more. There's the energetic piece. We've kind of covered it. So we've done physical, mental, emotion. I talked about um, maybe I should revisit that again because it's a big one to get your head around. Um, we talked about chronic stress. Mm-hmm. I talked about electromagnetic bundles of energy when we're when we're jolted out of alignment. We have that emotional trauma or even physical trauma and it's stored in the body. Um, when I, when I was first came across the concept of illness being rooted in trauma, I thought it was woo woo. I just could not connect how an emotional event could create a physical illness. And I actually went to the Truth About Cancer Life Symposium in 2016. I lost three friends to cancer in 2015, Mm. or maybe the treatment to it, in 2015. And I went on a research quest to figure out what cancer was really about, because just like my father's stroke, just like my eczema, I I realized that the whole medical industry, and I wanted to uncover this inner knowing that cancer wasn't what the mainstream presents it to be. And sure enough, that's what I found through reading it books and documentaries, etc. And I went to this Truth About Cancer Live Symposium, saw some amazing doctors, pioneers, helping people heal from cancer without any medical intervention. And there was one talk on um, trauma, and they showed this diagram of human body of where different emotions are stored in the body. Mm-hmm. And anger, for example, is manifested in the liver or grief in the lung. And and there's many others. I've got a chart of 60 next. But it's um, when I saw that, I just, I just, I wasn't at the right frequency, should we say, to really grasp. And it wasn't until a few years later when I discovered that emotions, there's physics of emo- there's physics behind emotion. They are literally electromagnetic bundles of energy. And I came across this term, two main people, actually, Dr. Bradley Nelson, who wrote The Emotion Code, one of the main protocols I use to help people release trapped emotion. And also uh, Dr. Joey Tennant, who wrote Healing is Voltage. And understanding the body electric and understanding how we're wired up like a house with different organs on different circuits. And all of those circuits go through our teeth, which act like circuit breakers. Uh-huh. And then we have all of these systems in the body, which are electrical. I used to be an electrician. So when I watched this 45 minute presentation on the body electric, everything just fell into place like a, uh-huh. like a jigsaw, everything coming together. Like yeah. seven years at that point, all of my research just came into place in one 45 minute presentation. And I realized this is it. We have cell fuels. If we're deficient in cell fuels, we become sick. Or if we have toxins, we we become sick. If there's scarring, if there's bundles of energy stopping the electrical flow, we would get sick. So there's a slogan that says, the organs weep the tears, the eyes refuse to shed. William Osler, father of modern medicine. Mm -hmm. If we don't let that energy out of the body, it gets stored Mm -hmm. as energy. Mm -hmm. And it's like you've got your foot on the garden hose stopping the water flow. Mm -hmm. It's dropping the voltage. That's what's happening with with trapped emotions. It drops the voltage. So when you let the energy out, which is much easier said than, sorry, it's much easier than most people realize. And you can do it in seconds. You Mm -hmm. don't have to talk about it, which can make things worse. You don't have to go do traditional talk therapy, which gives you more... More and more energy to the very thing you don't want to give energy to, like we were saying earlier. Nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Is the more energy you give to an event, to an to a memory, the more that memory becomes solidified in the brain and the subconscious Mm -hmm. mind and the body. It becomes more of a problem than yeah. So we want to transmute that energy, not give it energy. We want to get it out of the body. So that's what we do with systems like the emotion code, or with breath work, or with psychedelics. Mm -hmm. Something I'm fan of not for everyone of course and it comes with risks there's so many ways um trauma release exercises yoga tai chi martial arts there's so many ways that we can do it but we want to get that energy out of the body mm-hmm. are you familiar with the the, the analogy not, not even the analogy you know how when animals are chased if the the animal that's not chased sorry that is chased if they don't why can't i talk if they don't get caught 
that animal will stop and it will shake its body yeah. to release that trauma from the body. A lion chases a zebra. Why am I talking in American? I can say zebra. I'm English. <laughs> a lion chases a zebra. The zebra doesn't get caught. It will shake its whole body once it's free and free of that threat. Uh-huh. Same with dogs, same with cats. We yeah. don't do that, but we need to. Mm. I, I dated a girl a few years ago and we had this argument and she just started shaking her body. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is before I discovered all this uh-huh. stuff. Uh-huh. I used yeah. to heckle her for it. I was like, well, I don't know what you're doing. This is weird. Uh, but she was doing something very useful. She was shaking off that energy uh-huh. and uh, it all makes sense now. If we, do, if we don't disperse that energy, it can create illness. And it could be as small as an argument with a sibling when you're five years old or a parent when you're 10, or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a massive trauma. It can be something quite small. So, um, Or you might lose a job sometime, or fail an exam when you're 16. There's all these things that create an imbalance. And if we address that, that gives us the freedom to heal whatever it is in the body. So that's the emotional pillar, in a nutshell. Okay. Oh, that's very interesting. I'll have to remember that. It's it's huge. Uh, it's It's arguably the most important piece of healing I was wow. unless you're unless you're living next to a cell phone tower you're sleeping with your emf phone on your head giving your brain tumor all night no. um there's you know what i'm talking about is toxins which put a threat to our cells and dna emf is a massive toxin by the way i often talk about that in my podcast or sometimes podcasts have been dedicated that hot just that one subject alone. Mm. It's a huge threat to our health. Um, so I always talk about creating an environment which is conducive to healing, turning off the Wi-Fi, turning the plane into airplane mode when you're sleeping or turning off the Wi-Fi when you're sleeping, turning everything off, particularly when you're sleeping, protecting yourself during the day, protecting the home from Wi-Fi, protect, you know, just being mindful mm. about these threats. Mm-hmm. You know, toxins in the environment can be, a, your house could be built near a chemical plant or or pesticides being sprayed from a farm near you there's there's toxins in the environment the the point of bringing that up is i see illness as a result of two main things toxins Mm -hmm. but the trauma piece is so big people can work with asbestos asbestos for example which we know is carcinogenic not everyone who works with asbestos is going to get cancer not everyone so what makes the people who get cancer weaker and more susceptible to it you peel back the layers of the onion and you start to get down into to a weaker immune system what, make, what makes the immune system weaker oh lack of cell fuels and too many toxins or there's trauma when you go really 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 uh-huh. yeah which weakens the gut and people end up living by the hormones of stress which is one of the main reasons why a gut is weaker so um hmm. yeah the emotional piece is big and if i were to well i'm still doing it if i were to do this all over again which, which i'm not going to do but when i when i start on a new course with my clients we talk about that up front depending on where they are Mm-hmm. if they're ready for it we'll do it from week one but if they're not it's normally around week four or five that we start doing the trauma we start with the physical and as they get to know me and trust me and yeah. understand that this stuff works then they're ready to do it but what i would what i was going to say was what i'd like to do is start with that and then do the nutrition to get the most you know mm-hmm. results and it's often a piece that isn't looked at or if it is it's the last thing by which time it's often too late. Do it now. <laughs> Get to know the, the impact of trapped emotions on the body electric. We are electrically, we're literally wired up like a house. We are electrical bodies. We know that because of the heart and the brain, you know, everything about us. Every time we move a limb, that's electrical impulses. We're completely electrical. So yeah, I invite anyone to really look into different ways to release trauma. And I'll share I've shared it already. The emotion code for me has been a godsend for me and also my client. Okay. Okay. And that's, a, that's not, that is that a, a book as well? Like, yeah, that's not book and you though, yeah. right? That's someone else. That, it's or... someone else. Yeah. It's, it's in my book. And, oh, okay. you know, I, I always recommend if I ever find a pioneer, I will always give them credit because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and um, I talk about these people in my book as well. Okay. Okay. And on my website. Well, like I said, I'll put all that in the show notes for um, where people can find you and and um, what to look for as far as your your writing and and all of that. So that'd be great. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna we could probably talk for at least another couple hours, but I I think we probably we probably should end it here. And, yeah, whatever you like. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm just we've been yeah we've been talking. It's almost well it's almost two o'clock my time. Yeah. 
Okay. Of Ray. And and you can all you're always welcome to come back on the podcast. We can do a we can do a, a next we've got we've given a lot of information. So yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we're kind of overloading. Yeah. Allow the digestion to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you so much for coming on. Um you're welcome. Thank you, so Susan. So much incredible information. Um I have to I'm gonna have to have to go back and listen to this even myself, which I don't do very often with, with podcasts. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm similar. Yeah, I listen to anyway. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll, I, it's always, um, yeah. Anyways, more information than you need. Okay, so I am going to say that neither of us are doctors. This is not to be seen as medical advice, quote unquote. And if you are having a real medical emergency, please go and see whoever it is that you go to see, whether it's a doctor or a, or whoever, or go to the emergency room if that's the level of where it is. So with that being said, I will say thank you to Neil for coming on. And um, I will talk to all of you next week. This has been Healthy Tips After 50 with Susan Rosen. To stay on the cutting edge of the most effective health strategies, subscribe to this podcast and let us know what you thought of the show with a comment or like on iTunes. Visit HealthyTipsAfter50.com for this episode's show notes, more resources, and free offers.